from the National Broadcasting Commission in Papua New Guinea. The organizer of Papua New Guinea's independence celebrations, Mr. David Marsh, said today that he believes all the necessary preparations will be completed in time for independence on September the 16th. Mr. Marsh said some reshuffling of plans will be necessary as the independence day itself will now be on a Tuesday. It was originally proposed that the celebrations would be held over three days, Saturday to Monday. Mr. Marsh said that subject to the chief minister's and cabinet's approval, Sunday the 14th could now be the national day of prayer. Flag lowering ceremonies would be late on Monday, independent celebrations themselves on Tuesday the 16th, and the proposed national day of sport the next day. Mr. Marsh said... It is August 1975 in Papua New Guinea, a country of ancient cultures which has in the time span of one lifetime been colonized by Germany, Britain and Australia, invaded by Japan and finally by a mandate from the United Nations administered by Australia and introduced to the world of the 20th century. Throughout hundreds of islands, in the towns and in thousands of villages, the people are hearing the news. Their country will become an independent nation on September the 16th, 1975, and they're getting ready. Me pala to miki miki desula wok rong kabing na gud pala rong gabang bro mi pala salim toki kam. Mi to aki pala wakim bolong yumi presin long independent now. Or sem na mi pala wakim sampala ego long ABC bro mi pala long gagi do emi kisim baim sampala na ego ego inap na emi to best line up long yumi presin long gabang bro yumi long independent ni kam up now. Let's pala or sem na mi pala isa. Brong Alim Kandri na Brong Yumi Street. This is the news from the NBC 
period by untold count. Legislation was introduced into the Australian House of Representatives today to provide for Papua New Guinea to become independent on September 16. The Prime Minister and Minister representing the Minister for Foreign Affairs, Mr. Gov Whitlam, said the five bills represented an historic piece of legislation for Papua New Guinea, Australia, and for the European civilization from which Australians came. He described the introduction of the legislation as the last episode in the post-imperial post European decolonization. One of the bills, the Papua New Guinea Independence Bill, seeks to allow the Papua New Guinea Constitution to come into effect after Australia's administration ends on September the 15th. Mr. Whitlam said the new constitution will adopt only those laws which Papua New Guinea desires to continue as law. Independence. Because independence is getting close, we like to learn the meaning of the word independence to us today. What does the word independence mean? Sarah? It means freedom. Good boy. Any other answers besides? Yes. It means not to depend not to depend on someone. Good girl. Independence in English means looking after ourselves. More to I uh, looking after ourselves the dark better to man. You know? Independence and in a motu I see what I bite a hen. Namu heredi kadika. Yeah nina it's a siboda bite hen. Yeah now she benarita moon and a hair again. And Independence, I Independence, I will prepare some songs for that Independence Day and on that day I will sing those songs. Okay. What are you getting ready for that independence? Before the Independence Day come, I will get I will prepare my uniform ready for the for September 16th and on that day I will wear it and march from here to the village. Plus, I would like someone to get out and uh, write the uh, word independence in motu, in our language motu. My mom? Celebrations Committee has received notice that the Queen has invited Prince Charles to be her representative. The Governor General of Fiji and the Fijian Prime Minister Ratu Sakamisari have also accepted, oh, along with the President of Nauru, Mr. Hammer de Robert, and his wife. Yeah, Meanwhile, the traditional the gifts to be presented to our official guests for the celebrations are being prepared in villages all over the country. Activities planned in the districts as part of Papua New Guinea's independent celebrations will combine the traditional with the modern. At Angoram in the East Sipik District, Independence Day celebrations include canoe races on the Sipik River, the opening of a rebuilt house Tambaran, bicycle races, other sporting events and a traditional feast. You're listening to the news from the National Broadcasting Commission in Papua New Guinea. Papua New Guinea's new society was shaped by contact with people from other parts of the world, starting more than 500 years ago. But the impact of the white man was felt for the first time only a century ago. 
In 1873, a British naval officer, Captain John Moresby, sailed into a harbour on the southeast coast where the capital, bearing his name, now stands. More and more, the white man began to appear. He came to trade with bolts of cloth, axes and knives, mirrors and trinkets, trading for sandalwood and beige de mer. They came as recruiters, blackbird as they were called, to lure young men to work as cheap laborers on the sugarcane fields of North Queensland, Australia. The 19th century, the great imperial powers of Europe divided the island between themselves. The western half, now Irian Jaya, a province of Indonesia, was claimed by Holland in 1828. In 1884, Germany claimed the northeastern quarter. And in the same year, Commodore James Erskine arrived at Port Moresby and other coastal settlements to claim the southeastern quarter in the name of Great Britain. Now, I, James Elphinstone Erskine, establishing a protectorate of Her Most Gracious Majesty over a portion of New Guinea, has directed me to proclaim such protection in a formal manner at this place. You're with National Radio in Papua New Guinea in 1975, Independence Year. read by Anton Kaun. Independence is just over a week away, and as officials make the final preparations, one of their major concerns is the weather. Many of the activities are outdoors. One is the spectacular fireworks display scheduled for one minute past midnight on September the 16th. This will last for between 10 and 20 minutes, but wet weather could dampen the enthusiasm of spectators. Rain could also affect a number of school pageants being organized throughout the country. Schools are expected to organize sporting events and sing-sings on Monday, September the 15th, and much effort has gone into preparing for the day. Members of the House of Assembly will be able to bring their wives to Port Mosby for Independence Day celebration. But members with more than one wife may bring only one. Uh, he says, my father says, uh, Papua, we are all in Papua New Guinea, and we just have independence in so, September 1975, and he's glad. But he does not want all the Europeans to go out, go out of Papua New Guinea. He wants them to stay back, and we just work together in Papua New Guinea. And myself think, we Papua New Guineans, I guess we have this, this independence. I am very glad of we are having independence. And uh, we Papua New Guineans are new nations in the world, and we have joined in, uh, in everything through the world. And uh, I'm very glad, glad of Michael Sumare, John Guys, and all these people, the member of House of Assembly. Looking back, you know, uh, in 61, when I first envisaged the independent state of Papua New Guinea and its flag and its national anthem and its constitution, um, when people sort of slammed me and said I was rather communistic-minded, I was rather pinkish or reddish, I was extremely left, um, that I was a man ahead of my time, I did not dream that I would 
be able to live through those turmoil that, uh, days to witness this. A lot of people in this country thought, oh, well, we wouldn't be able to do it. They were talking in terms of two or three decades, while I was talking in terms of a few years. One stage in Australia, I said, oh, I don't see it, you know. I cut out myself to be the Prime Minister. I think that's one of my quotations in Australian paper. Um, I never thought, you know, by forming the first political party that we would be able to see it, uh, see it true. But then when I know that I had a lot of support uh, from young Papua New Guineans, I thought, well, I think we should be able to make it. Ready? Number two crotch along double bar, strong more yet. Ah, once more. Rolls, one, two. Good morning. This is the news from the National Broadcasting Commission in Papua New Guinea. The national government has urged all public servants throughout Papua New Guinea to involve themselves in independent celebrations. The chairman of the Public Service Board, Mr. Sarah Pitoy, said independence is a once-in-a-lifetime experience and the government wants to make it a great success. The Independence Day Committee is still tackling the problem of suitable dress standards for the independent celebrations. The committee's suggestion for night formal wear is dark slacks, long sleeved white shirt, shoes and short socks, or dark tailored rami and sandals and long sleeved white shirt for men. There are no recommendations for women other than to say they will complement the men's fashion. They are very happy with me in the midst, talking and laughing at their dressing me up like a young girl that says, that's the way they're laughing at me. That I'm a young girl now, it's too late now to be old as hell. For the independence, they made me young again. <laughs> from the NBC, read by Tony Bray. First, the main points. Visitors to Papua New Guinea's independence celebrations continue to arrive at Jackson's Airport. 
the first aircraft to complete the independence air race about to cross the finish line. And people all over Papua New Guinea taking part in independence celebrations, but a few in the Western Highlands reported not to have heard of independence. Visitors to Papua New Guinea's independence celebrations continue to arrive at Jackson's airport. This morning, an Air Nauru jet brought President Hamadi Robert of Nauru along with his wife and a party of four officials. The Indonesian Foreign Minister, Mr. Adam Malik, was among a seven-man Indonesian party to arrive. <laughs> Papua New Guinea News, Long Talk, Virginia, Gam Long Port, Mosby, Gabriel, Vaca, by Redim. Walk long one to Papua and Man, long walk him rain, long pass him all celebration, long independence, long Port Mosby. Now the attempt up, by a Papua and rainmaker to mar independence Papua celebrations in Port Mosby Papua will fail, according to a prominent Papua magistrate and grandson of a well known traditional rainmaker, Mr. Andrew Michael. Last week, a so called rainmaker said to be a member of the Papuan separatist group, staged a rain dance to bring rain to Port Mosby's Independence Day celebrations. However, according to the secretary of the village court secretariat, Mr. Maino, the rainmaker was wasting his time. Mr. Maino, whose grandfather claims to have successfully brought rain in the past, has confidently predict predicted that it is going to be fine in Port Mosby for the celebrations. The National Weather Service is in a grip. It has forecast mainly fine weather throughout the country on Tuesday and Wednesday. All public servant Long Angorum area and all school Piccanini now come up. Now by you looking flag belong Australia by go down and mark him one pillar ceremony by this is a flag belong Australia in Ock and Moron inside Long country belong you pillar, Papua New Guinea. Tomorrow, big pillar day belong you me, people belong Papua New Guinea, by flag belong Papua New Guinea, yet you go on top. Now by policeman, by down in flag, by you heard him, uh, 
all sco school picking any Bailey sing. God save the Queen. And by marking this little something now, we talk all the same long end. I took the flag down. Many of us, young boys, young girls, school children, everybody were crying. Myself, I was crying. They are standing. I just hand the flag to Prince Charles. We were crying. <laughs> The women's like we were crying because we know that the poor Europeans came to teach us the right way, not the wrong way to go on the right side, not to go on the left. That's the way. They are departing from us, and we were crying and crying. We couldn't stop nearly half an hour. 
when then priest Dark was talking with him, look up, but we are still crying and crying. When John Guy told, them, told him that the Australian flag is returning, no one took the heads up. Everybody went bad, we were crying, you know. We couldn't help crying, we were still crying. <laughs> You're listening to National Radio, it's now 7 o'clock. This is the news from the NBC, read by Johnny City. First, the main points. Independence is only five hours away. The Australian flag has already been lowered for the last time. Two new knighthoods in a special independence honours list. Police happy with the way independence celebrations have gone so far. And Papua New Guinea independence celebrations in Bougainville will go ahead despite boycott threats by secessionist leaders. Now the news in detail. Independence is five hours away. The independent state of Papua New Guinea will be born at midnight with a 101 gun salute and the goodwill and congratulations of nations throughout the world. At one minute past midnight, the Governor General of Papua New Guinea, Sir John Geis, will announce a state of independence in an NBC radio broadcast to the new nation. At the same time, Papua New Guinea's formal links with Australia will be severed and the new homegrown constitution will come into force. Dr. Gass's announcement will follow addresses to the nation by the Chief Minister, Mr. Sumare, and the leader of the opposition, Mr. Te Aba. Civic Drive from the main Waigani Drive to Independence Hill have been racing against time to complete the city before tomorrow. We bring you now an address to the nation by the Honorable Leader of the Opposition, Mr. Tayaba. Now, Emi Wan Bran Big Bran Day in Biran Papua Ninguni. Emi Wan Bran Day, Yumi by Pingi. Na Oropini in Biran Yumi. And now the address to the nation by the Honorable the Chief Minister, Mr. Michael Sumare. Today, our young nation takes possession of the prize which marks our people's determination and hard work. This country and its people now enter independence and sovereignty, and as from now, we will be counted among the family of nations. We have talked about this day, we have planned for it, worked for it, and look forward to it. I know that every man, woman, and child of our new nation shares this moment of pride and happiness with one heart to join in celebrating our independence. Papua New Guinea is now independent. The constitution of the independent state of Papua New Guinea under which all power rests with the people is now in effect. We have at this point in time broken with our colonial past and we now stand as an independent nation in our own right.
Radio Broadcasting on Independence Day. The time is half past six. Good morning, true. Here now, National News, Long Talk, Pijini Kam Long, NBC Long, Port Mosby, Douglas Dark, Iridium. Today, me people day true, Long All Celebration, Long Look Play in the Independent State, Long Papua New Guinea. Long Port Mosby today, Triple Big Play Ceremony, or Boom One Time, by Makim Kamap, Long Papua New Guinea, also Mont Blue Nukla Country. Long Independence Hill, Long Wagani, all by by Puli Migo and Top Flag, Long Papua New Guinea. Long Makim come up long this Planukla country. Na Prince Charles Baba Opim National Park. So Papa Mi Pali Boom here today. Long honoring you. Mi Pali Boom here today. Long asking you by you bless him Ohama Master Long Mi Pala. Mi Pali Boom here today. Long asking you by and by you bless him Chief Minister. No member blow me, Pala. By and by, Oli can straighten good, sit down, and work in this new color something. Country blow Papua New Guinea straight. The fellow asking you all this color something. No name blow Christ. The Lord blow me, Pala. <laughs> I've asked him, uh, Father Dwyer, belong Catholic Mission, long Angorum, long give him sample of talk talk, now bless him flag, belong uh, Yumi Long Papua New Guinea. This little flag here, he also marked, long show him. All good up, Papua New Guinea. He like come up one line, now one bell. God, you talk. Suppose God, he no sign by long old man. Time only work him house. Work by long old, by and by, only lose nothing. Now me fella asking you, long time, long blessing this fella flag. Sign by long this fella country, Papua New Guinea. All same old people belong him, he can he stop one bell true. Now good for the time, he stopped all time, all time. Now be blessing this for the flag, long name long papa, now long son, now long spirit to son too. All right. Behind long kai kai tasol, by so much people I stop, now I'm gonna put it fire up. Em, this people I talk sabe long people all the same. Rest is long canoe now, by come up. Long time, all man, all man only raises long canoe. By and by, all picking in his school. By the pool, long only canoe. Now, he's throwing away all this full of bottle. I'm only ready in finish. He's tap. Behind long raises long canoe. All, all the man by one tap, can long pull it long. Long, what him all kind, kind raises by stab and tap. Raise his loss and pull him rope. Tell him try. He grab him try. Walk him basket. <laughs> Now flies alone over the country. At approximately half past ten this morning, the Papua flag was hoisted on the defender's hill at Waigani in Port Moresby. One of the largest crowds ever to assemble anywhere in Papua New Guinea surrounded the hill. By the time the Governor General, Dr. John Guys, and Prince Charles arrived, about 20,000 people had gathered. Dr. Guys handed the flag to the commander of the Defense Force, Brigadier General Hero, and asked him to raise the flag on behalf of the people of Papua New Guinea.
shortly after the waving of the flag, a fresh breeze blew up and the flag fluttered fully. Something on the long post, you got money, you got cigarettes, you got tobacco, now all, you got five kina, or you put him on the long post. You got all good class, something, and tell us to stop. Long put him tea inside. That's long night you call, you drink tea in the long time. One, two, three. I'm going to have a good day. Australia's 29-year-old United Nations trusteeship over New Guinea was formally terminated today at a brief ceremony at United Nations headquarters in New York. Papua New Guinea is expected to apply for United Nations membership sometime during the General Assembly session, which begins later today, our time. Now, now, and the time we have now, we have to fly finish now. Now, all money right now, we can pause, all good black clothes, it's our time, and good black show too. Now, you look in the show, you put it on the singing blow, man, but singing blow, you have much more money. Now, all money looking nothing, all the sex sex through, yeah, long time, this is our post now. I think all the sex sex through, yeah. The Australian Prime Minister, Mr Gough Whitland, said today that Australia will continue to support Papua New Guinea. He said that although a special kind of relationship between Australia and Papua New Guinea is coming to an end, certain things will not end. Mr Whitland said the friendship between the two countries and the trust and confidence each brought to the other will continue. In other news, Palestinian guerrillas agreed to leave the Egyptian but will take their three hostages with them to Algiers. And police in America shoot dead an armed man who attempted to hijack a jet in. Sitting block queen two every mama's name like I'm looking him say low. I rent now that me blow hammers and rod this stuff now saying I mean ready must be come now or send me talk out this fella talk glow me. Yeah. 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 Y
back in Port Moresby shortly after 4 o'clock this afternoon and after meeting tour officials and senior government officers, he boarded an aircraft of the Royal Australian Air Force for Darwin. Twins are among nine babies born at the Port Moresby General Hospital on Independence Day. The babies, a boy weighing 1.8 kilograms and a girl weighing 1.6 kilograms and their mother are reported to be doing well. The rainmaker hired by the Papuan separatist group to disrupt Papua New Guinea's independence celebrations could be looking for a new job. The National Weather Service said that on Independence Day, the national capital recorded only 0.8 of a millimeter, and yesterday no rainfall was registered, although there was some light sprinkling of rain throughout the city area. A spokesman for the National Weather Service said the dry conditions are normal for this time of year, and he expects them to continue. of the United Nations has unanimously recommended UN membership for Papua New Guinea. The new state of Papua New Guinea, which became independent last week, will be the World Organization's 142nd member when its application is formally approved by the General Assembly. United Nations sources said this is likely early next month. Some people in the middle Musa area of the Afore sub-district in the northern district will be celebrating Papua New Guinea's independence next Monday. 
two members of the Taruba Independent Celebrations Zone, Mr. Banao and Mr. Bebea, that the people did not celebrate last week as they were scared of being killed by wars, bombings or unusual happenings during the celebrations. They told the NBC's Popondether office today that people in the Taruba zone covering 12 villages were now sure that nothing bad had happened and so they will celebrate independence next Monday. You're listening to the news from the National Broadcasting Commission of Papua New Guinea.